Las Vegas, famous, fabulous playground of the West. A wide open town that never goes to sleep. Vegas! Vegas, baby, Vegas! You're either in or you're out. Right now. My best mates are going to Las Vegas this weekend. I'm told it's incredible. Las Vegas, here we go! Pack your bags and get ready for a different kind of Vegas experience with someone who knows Vegas inside and out. You're listening to Vegas Never Sleeps with Stephen Maggi. Welcome once again to Las Vegas, Nevada. On today's show, you'll meet a couple of folks who are experts on topics that Vegas fans love, boxing and entertainment. When you discuss the history of boxing, you cannot ignore organized crime. Prolific boxing author Jeffrey Sussman will talk about the mob's influence in the sweet science. Next, how about a great new show on the Strip? Its name is Vegas Gone Country, and it's become very popular in just its opening weeks. You'll meet the creator of Vegas Gone Country, Peter Pavone, who is also one of the show's star acts. And as always, you'll hear from our regulars on the wine world of Eddie O., Eddie Osterlin, America's first master sommelier, talks about those special restaurant wine and food pairings you see. Are they a good option? On luxury living Vegas style, Katie Medrano of Flipping Vegas talks about the hottest design options on the market today. Finally, Scott Robin of VitalVegas.com will explain why some people pay so much money to be a part of the nightclub scene in Vegas. We all know that sports has been a place that organized crime has looked to to make some more money, and no sport has been more aimed at than boxing. Well, finally, there is a definitive book out there that talks about boxing and the mob. It's from our good friend Jeffrey Sussman, who all his stuff on boxing is incredible. This book is called Boxing and the Mob, The Notorious History of the Sweet Science, and it's just been released, and uh, Jeffrey will tell us all about how to get it. Jeffrey, good to have you on. Uh... First of all, your book is just a a page turner. You know, you can't, it's not only a history, but it's also fun. And you open up with the idea, the whole idea, or first heard about boxing and the mob when at your bar mitzvah, you were introduced to somebody there by your father. Tell us a little bit about that. My father had an uncle, uh, his name was Irving, and I met him at uh, my bar mitzvah. I had never known him before. And um, when I was introduced to him, he handed me a, a hundred dollar bill uh, in, in 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 cash that was in the mid 1950s yeah a- and i i was struck by it you know a hundred dollar bill from someone i i had never met before anyway i asked my father about this man and my father told me that irving had been a uh, a bootlegger during prohibition and uh, uh, during the uh, uh, and had made a fortune and 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 had a in a state up next to Governor Harriman's in upstate New York. And my father's family was rather poor during the Depression, and his uncle Irving didn't give him any financial help, but he advised him on uh, betting on fixed fights. <laughs> oh, and, wow. <laughs> and he told him in particular a, a number of fights to bet on in which Primo Carnera w- w- was fighting, and Primo Carnera was owned by a mobster named Oni Madden, and uh, my father's uncle told him, you know, bet, bet $75 and, and, and you'll win 750 or 1000 And he gave him other uh, 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 price fights to, to bet on of, of less well-known people mm-hmm. where, where the odds were, were much greater uh, than they were with uh, Primo Carnera. And I was fascinated by this when my father told me this story. It was the first time I ever heard about uh, yeah. Uh, uh, fixed fights in boxing. Well, and there was a risk, right? If you do that, and then somebody finds out about it, and it shouldn't have been there. So, I mean, being a part of that, even as a uh, gambler, was a little risky. Probably. I'm sure it was. In your book, you, you talk about this, but you start out with the Arnold Rothstein story, which a lot of people know, involving the fixing of the 1919 World Series, which... At the time, it was a huge thing because it put really pro sports in danger. Sure. And one of the things that, that Rothstein and uh, his bag man, uh, a former featherweight boxing champion named Abe Patel, 
uh, figured out was that it would be much easier to fix a boxing match than to fix a, a baseball game because in baseball you had to fix all those players. Right. In, in, in boxing, you only had to fix one player, and uh, it didn't cost you as much, and the, the risks were much less. Yeah, exactly, and that you know was such a shock at that time, and so forth. And of course, the Major League Baseball's reaction to that was bringing in Judge Landis. All right, we're going to really get down on that. But like you say, boxing is the is the easy touch, right? Because there's just so so many less people involved. That, that, that's right, and and even if you don't fix the boxer, all you have to do is fix one or two judges for a, a match where there's not going to be a knockout, where it's just going to be decided on points, and the judges will be the ones to to decide how many points to award to a particular boxer. Yeah, you know, you've covered boxing all your life. Points are one of those things where one or two here or there can make a whole difference, and it's really kind of hard to, as an observer to see that. It is hard, but, you know, a lot of people have been kind of flabbergasted when they've watched a fight and they've decided that uh, uh, a fighter A uh, had outboxed fighter B, and yet fighter B won. And they want to know wh- whether the judge is incompetent or were they fixed, and in most cases they were fixed. You know, you say something great in the book, and I, I marked it, and it, it hit me right away. You go, gamblers only bet on sure things, you know, and... When they did these type of things, uh, Jeffrey, was there always that risk that somebody could not take a dive, turn on you and stuff, and I guess that put their life in jeopardy? Well, it, w- it was interesting because with Max Baer, when he was fighting Primo Carnera for the heavyweight championship of the world, two mobsters came into his dressing room and they told him he better lose that fight. And Max Baer had a very tough manager named Ansel Hoffman, and he told the mobsters to take a hike, and for some reason they did. And they turned around, and Oni Madden and his cohorts all bet on Max Baer ah. to, uh, <laughs> to, to win, and supposedly they cleaned up. They won over a million dollars. Wow. Well, Max Baer strikes me, and I, I got that from reading your book about him. He was a pretty decent guy. He wasn't going to go for that, I would think. No, he, he wasn't that kind of guy at all. He he felt that uh, you know, he didn't have to go along with the mob in order to be successful. And there were a number of fighters later on who didn't feel as if they had to go along with the mob. Uh, Sugar Ray Robinson uh, and, and Carmen Basilio were, were two who absolutely resisted the mob. And uh, n- nothing really happened to them for resisting the mob. More with Jeffrey Sussman, author of Boxing and the Mob, in just a few moments. Time now for the wine world of Eddie O. Eddie, America's first master sommelier, has been talking about things that will be offered at various restaurants. Here's yet another. A lot of the really fun restaurants around Las Vegas, for example, have these uh, special menus that have maybe five courses, and each course has a wine hooked up to it. Now, I know you're big on combining wines with food and what have you. Are those pretty safe, generally speaking, to go in and trust those things, do you find? Or is that something that maybe be more of a risk than you might think? Well, that's a tough question because, you know, if if the person who put them together is qualified, like any you know, certified sommelier, you're going to get a nice thing. On the other hand, n- not in Vegas, but in a, in a smaller town, sometimes the owner of a restaurant will find, uh, they call them bin enders, wines that haven't sold for whatever reason. They put them on the menu, marry them with some kind of dish and go, these are good together, and they're just trying to get rid of inventory. That could happen. It doesn't happen very often uh, if you if you're careful. But um, yeah, that, that that's know your chef. Right? Yeah, know your chef. You know, know what know what you're getting into. Don't come in and have them pull the rug on you, and you know, don't prepare yourself. Do your homework. And again, most people are most people make a reservation on a on a Thursday for a Friday, and they go in and they say, okay, let it happen. I got an eight o'clock reservation. Well, so do eighty other people. So you're one of eighty. You're maybe not that special. And, uh, you know, they force you to have a drink at the bar to wait for your table, which should have been ready anyway if you knew the people beforehand. The table is called a reservation. An 8 o'clock reservation, you should come in at 8 o'clock and sit down. Don't be, talk, don't talk, but don't be talking to me about going to the bar and have a drink. That's just a way to, to pry a, an extra 12 bucks each out of us for some kind of cocktail that uh, is probably not any good. 
Eddie O will be back again next week. People ask me all the time about the good old days in Las Vegas. You know when you could stay for less and your money went a long way? Well, guess what? I got the way you can do that right now. Stay at the Orleans Hotel. It's a great place. Believe it or not, they have free parking, which is almost unheard of these days. Lower resort fees. It's a mile and a half away from the Strip and only four miles from the airport. And if you want to go to the Strip, they have a free shuttle every day. You got to find out more. Make a reservation at orleanscasino.com. That's orleanscasino.com. More with Jeffrey Sussman, author of Boxing and the Mob, in just a few moments. You're listening to Vegas Never Sleeps with Stephen Maggi, coast to coast on the Biz Talk Radio Network. Times are changing. The circus of politics, healthcare's low standards and high prices, and let's not forget food quality. What to do? Arm yourself with Life Change Tea at GetTheTea.com. In a world of chemical imbalance and poor air and water quality, it's time you make a move. Log on to GetTheTea.com and stock up on organic non-GMO supplements. Don't forget the tea. GetTheTea.com. Cleansing your body never felt so good. And we have a brand new tea called Takedown Tea, which helps support healthy glucose. All natural body support so you can be at your best, naturally. All you have to do is log on to GetTheTea.com. That's GetTheTea.com. We're not a fad that comes and goes. We are the real deal. Join us and armor up. GetTheTea.com. That's GetTheTea.com. Changing America's health one tea bag at a time. Do you own a real business that makes real money? Not just an idea for a business, but a real revenue-generating business. Then we have what every business needs to run and grow. Cash. Call the Business Cash Advance Line, and in just five minutes, you could be well on your way to securing up to $1 million in funding for your business. Use the money however you want. Try new advertising, buy inventory, purchase equipment, or pay taxes and other bills. Call now to secure up to $1 million in less than a week. The process is quick and easy. Call the Business Cash Advance Line to speak with an account manager now. Representatives are standing by, so if you need to get up to $1 million in working capital to grow your business, don't wait. Call right now. 800-445-1099. 800-445-1099. Call now. 800-445-1099. That's 800 445 one zero nine nine and now another film rental discovery welcome to the indie film minute religion is an inescapable facet of society here in america home of the bible belt and mega churches as far as the eye can see christianity is king its creeping influence has its fair share of critics but likely few are as entertaining as brian tannelly's dramedy save Jenna Malone plays Mary, a devout teenager who loves praising the Lord with her best friend Hilary Fay. When Mary's boyfriend Dean comes out to her, Mary proceeds to follow through on a vision wherein Jesus tells her to save Dean's soul by losing her virginity to him. When Mary winds up pregnant and Dean is sent away to a Christian rehab center, she is forced to navigate her senior year confused and concerned about her once firm beliefs. Malone's performance as Mary is a knockout punch filled with soul-searching that rises far above run-of-the-mill teen angst. Mandy Moore's turn as the more radically religious Hilary Fay is also a highlight. Watching her bounce off the walls in response to Mary's loss of faith is equal parts hilarious and humbling. Saved pulls off the high-wire act of realistically portraying what it's like to be forced to confront your beliefs while refraining from making a mockery of devout religion. Saved. Not in theaters. Discovery through rental. Some knowledge belongs to us and us alone. The way our girlfriends walk, talk, touch their hair. Details that only a sister can know about her girls. But what about our other girls? The ones we carry with us every day. Our bond with our sister girls gives life. But knowing your breasts can save it. Go to knowyourgirls.org for the facts you need on breast health. 
brought to you by Susan G. Coleman and the Ad Council. Now, let's return to Vegas Never Sleeps with Stephen Maggi. You are listening to Jeffrey Sussman, author of many great books on boxing, including his latest, Boxing in the Mob. That's really interesting because it, it had to be a gutsy thing because, you know, especially back then, these guys would come and visit you. And, you know, your family's at risk. Everything you care about is at risk. It seems like it's pretty gutsy to say no to them. It is. Uh, you know, there's a story of uh, Frankie Carbo who controlled boxing uh, t- throughout the uh, the 1950s and early 1960s, going up to Sugar Ray Robinson's training camp, and and uh, he was waiting for Robinson in his car, and he said to Robinson, you know, you can make a lot more money if you go along with us and, and let us fix some of your fights. And Robinson just said to him, you know, that's not my style. I don't, I don't do it. And, and, and they, let, they let him alone. That's that's really it's it's not only brave but it's a smart decision because then you don't get into that I mean, and it really is all on you exactly and then uh, uh, Carmen Basilio's manager said that if he wanted a title fight he'd have to pay off Frankie Carbo and uh, Frankie Palermo who, who controlled pretty much the middleweight and welter- welterweight divisions during the forties and fifties and early sixties and uh, Carmen Basilio said to his manager he said look. You want to pay them? You pay them. I'm not giving you a nickel out of, out of my pay. And, and, and that was his way of standing up to the mob. Wow. Well, you know, and it wasn't just championships, right? I mean, the local cards, that happened there, too. They were involved in that, weren't they? Absolutely. And you couldn't get a fight in, in Madison Square Garden, for instance, as a welterweight or a middleweight un, unless you were willing to work with Frankie Carpo, Frankie Palermo, and a guy named Jim Norris. And they they controlled uh, all the fights, and they controlled the outcomes of those fights. You know, I, I was watching an old Untouchables. It's kind of a pet, f- fun thing I do. I love that show. And they were showing that. Why was it that these cities, you know, where, like you say, New York and I guess Chicago, where this was obvious it was happening and nobody tried to stop it? The, 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 the mobsters had, had a, a tremendous lock on it, and... They were they were paying off politicians left and right. Um, uh, you know, especially in in New York at Tammany Hall, which controlled uh, Democratic politics in in New York. And if you wanted to do business with Tammany Hall or you wanted favors from them, you just paid them off. Yeah, it's incredible. It's hard to imagine now. You know, there's some great fights you talk about in there, and you know we're familiar with some of them thanks to uh, the movies like Raging Bull. You talk about Jake LaMotta. And in fact, I think the chapter is the big fix on that. Right. And that was a tough one, right? Because Lamana must have hated that. And he had to do that to move up. And, uh, you know, here was a guy that was tough as nails and he just had to kill him. Yeah. I, I mean, he r- refused for years to deal with the mob, and but he couldn't get a title fight. And uh, finally, uh, he, he wanted a, a title fight so badly that that he agreed to take a dive uh, after uh, Frankie Carbo beseeched him to do this. And even after he took the dive against Billy Fox, and it was very obvious to everyone who saw the fight that, that he took a dive, because he just stood there and hardly defended himself, and people were booing and screaming. And that, that was his way of, of demonstrating to the world that, that uh, it was a dive, that he really wasn't fighting. But he, even after that, he had to have five or six more fights before he got a shot at the title, and, 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 and then he finally came into his own. But in, at the time that he took the dive against Billy Fox, he also bet $100,000 on Billy Fox to win. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's another way of doing it, I suppose. You know, in, you mentioned that a few times where people, you know, the crowd can see it and they're booing. Do you think part of the reason uh, that this was kind of allowed to continue is the fact that it didn't stop people from going to the fights, you know? And and I think I, I get kind of the idea that they all kind of knew that that happened once in a while, and they were angry about it, that they're watching it. But at the same time, it was part of the game. It, it, it was part of the game, and, and a lot of the people who went to the fights thought that it only happened periodically. They didn't think that it happened as often as it did, because most of the time it wasn't that obvious. 
Yeah, and, and you know, getting back to the story of your uncle, I could see where um, you know if people had the right connections on that thing, and you don't make it too obvious, it was a way you could make a real living on this. Yeah, I, I mean, people who were involved in the boxing game were making a fortune. And, you know, they turned to boxing after Prohibition ended because they were looking for other ways to make money illegally. And uh, one of the ways that they found w- w- was through boxing. And, and it combined easily with gambling. And, and, and there were m- members of organized crime who were promoting gambling, and gambling fit in very neatly w- with, um, with boxing. Well, how did they finally get the mob, I mean, at least there might be some influences now, who knows, but there's not the influence that you write about, certainly back uh, s- several decades ago. What was the big change? I mean, was it was there, uh, you know, did the game just clean itself up, or how did that work? Well, well what happened is th- there was a major prosecution against uh, Frankie Carbo, Frankie uh, uh, Palermo, uh, Jim Norris, and, 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 and others, uh, as a result of um, FBI wiretaps in Los Angeles in the 1940s, when Frankie Car uh, I'm sorry, in the uh, late 1950s, okay. when, when Frankie Carbo and Frankie Palermo were trying to get hold of a uh, welterweight champ named uh, Don Jordan. And they were threatening uh, Don Jordan's trainer and manager. And they even uh, severely beat them up. And, and the local police in Los Angeles weren't doing anything uh, to help them. They, they refused to get involved. And uh, the manager and the trainer w- went to the feds, and the feds wired them and tapped their phones, and they got all this evidence against uh, Frankie Carbo and Frankie Palermo. And, and it was prosecuted by Robert Kennedy, and, and he won convictions, and uh, Frankie Carbo was sentenced to 25 years in prison, and Frankie Palermo, 15 years I think that Jim Norris was out on probation and, and, and was fined and had to give up some of his interests. But even from prison, uh, Frankie Carbo and F- Frankie Palermo had an interest in Sonny Liston, and, and, yeah. and, and, and they were involved in, in his fights as well. You'll hear more from Jeffrey Sussman in just a moment. Time now for Luxury Living Vegas Style with Gady Madrano, star of Flipping Vegas, which is seen on the DIY Network. Just check your local listings. So, what are the top design styles and houses in 2019? Let's ask Gady. Do you see any design trends now that are just different and are really appealing and drawing people, you know, both the buyers coming in and so forth that people are doing now that's a little different? Modern. People love modern and minimalism, I have to say. Just those clean lines, a clean look, uh, a lot of quartz, a lot of grays like grays what i've always said grays are like the new browns they're neutral you can add any color to them and just a modern clean look is becoming really what's needed a lot of remodels are are going in that direction too that you know they were built not not older properties or some older properties but you just make the inside look more modern clean lines not cluttered in terms of colors and and be more neutral and that can add tremendous value to your home too if you're looking to sell and just generally that's the direction things are going you can find out more about gady at gadyrealestate.com that's spelled g-a-d-y more with boxing writer jeffrey sussman in just a few moments you are listening to vegas never sleeps with Stephen Maggi. Nationwide on the Biz Talk Radio Network. Have you written a book? You can become a published author with Dorrance Publishing, the nation's oldest publishing services company. Countless authors have trusted Dorrance for nearly a 100 years to bring their book to the market. Our professional team will edit your text, design your book pages, and create an appealing, eye-catching custom cover. Plus, our authors benefit from a custom book promotion marketing campaign that makes your book available where people buy books, like Amazon and -and brick-and-mortar bookstores. So make this free call right now to claim your free author's guide to publishing. Don't wait another day. Take one step closer to realizing your dream of becoming a published author and seeing your name in print. You've already written a book, so the next thing to do is make this free call right now to Dorn's Publishing and get your free guide to publishing. Call right now. 800-908-9850. 800-908-9850. 
That's 800-908-9850. The two tight ends are lined up as tight ends. Back goes Darrell to pass. He's looking for Smith, but instead goes down the middle. Chester, touchdown Raiders! had gotten free at the five and was all alone in the end zone two yards in. That is the Oakland Raiders. No, not the Oakland Raiders of 2017, but the Oakland Raiders of 1972. And that's what we're talking about on a new feature called RaiderHistorian.com. You go there and we have every week... Different highlights from years of the past, including a look back at Al Davis, the owner, all the great games, the rivalries, the philosophy of the team, and so forth. It's a must as the Raiders head to Las Vegas in just another few years. If you're here in Las Vegas, you got to know that history. And if you're from Oakland and L.A., you'll want to relive that as well. RaiderHistorian.com Steven. Who said that? Me, down here. Ugh, what are you, a yellow booger? I'm a banana slug, Steven. What are you doing in my room? I'm your sense of adventure. It's been a long time since we've had an adventure in the forest. Mom took me to the forest last year. I'm a slug, Steven. It took me a long time to get here. You're right. I should get out. Yeah, the forest is not that far away. Hey, Mom! Come to the forest where the more adventurous you lives. Check out discovertheforest.org for cool places nearby. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. Angstrom Minerals represent a quantum leap in nutrition. Liquid Minerals offer a more concentrated and quicker boost because they integrate into the body faster. Unlike that handful of pills you take every day, Angstrom Minerals bypass digestion and go directly to the cells. Try Angstrom Minerals for your body, your health, and your life. Register online and use your account to save 5% off your retail order every time you shop. Some restrictions apply. Please visit ElementalResearchInc.com. It was a goal that I wanted to achieve from the very beginning. I'm a 40-year-old man that walked in there to get his high school diploma. I wasn't sure if I could do it. It was very hard for me, but the teachers, the counselors, they help you. One of the teachers was uh, Miss Araceli. Miss Araceli, she gave me direction. Every single time I had a question, she'll put down whatever she's doing and she'll come over and she'll sit there with you until you get it. At age 47, with the help of his teacher, Marco finished his high school diploma. 50% of getting your high school diploma is walking through those doors. The other 50% is doing the work. Getting your high school diploma, it is a life-changing experience. It really is. It catapults you to where you want to go. No one gets a diploma alone. If you're thinking of finishing your high school diploma, you have help. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. That's finishyourdiploma.org. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ad Council. Juice, Mom! Juice, juice, juice! Mommy, why are we going to the store? Mom, Mom I want Mommy. juice! Mom! Juice, 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 Mommy! Juice, 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 Mom! Juice, juice, juice. Your child will have different needs at different stages of life, and that includes the car seat. That's right, the car seat. A car seat isn't one size fits all. You have to have the right seat based on your child's age, weight, and height. See, car crashes are a leading killer of children ages 1 to 13. But there's a website that gives you all the information you need. Safercar.gov slash the right seat. You'll find out about types of seats, when to have a seat rear facing, when to switch it to forward facing, when it's time for a booster seat, and when it's time for your child to ride in the back seat with a seat belt. Protect your child's future at every stage of life. Go to safercar.gov slash the right seat. That's safercar.gov slash the right seat. A message from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. You're listening to Vegas Never Sleeps with Stephen Maggi. You are listening to the author of the book, Boxing in the Mob, Jeffrey Sussman. I'm just wondering, as I'm listening to you too, the fact of when TV got involved with Howard Cosell and more and more of these fights were televised, it was less, uh, you know, more people are seeing it, right? D- does that go a little bit to help? Because, you know, more the more eyes on it, I, I would imagine, the harder it is to do. Uh, yeah, yeah, you would think so, but, but nevertheless, um, uh, Carbo and, and uh, Jim Norris uh, controlled all the Friday night fights that were televised that came from Madison Square Garden, oh, wow. and, and for them, it was a monopoly. 
so that when a, uh, a, a, a very fine boxing trainer named Ray Arcel was uh, promoting televised boxing matches from Boston on Saturday nights, he was warned uh, not to, uh, to continue televising them, and, and he had a number of threats against his life, and he ignored them. Hmm. And one day on his uh, way to the Boston Arena, someone came up behind him with a lead pipe wrapped uh, in newspaper and, and cracked him over the head and fractured his skull. Hmm. And, and he was in the hospital for weeks, and he decided at, at that point that his life was worth more than televising uh, uh, boxing matches. And so that stopped uh, the televising of boxing matches from Boston on Saturday night. And Ray Arcel dropped out of boxing for 14 years. He was, he was frightened of getting involved in it. And he only went back, uh, uh, as I said, 14 years later, when uh, the, the manager of Roberto Duran uh, wanted him to, uh, to, to be Roberto's trainer because he thought he was one of the best trainers around. And Ray Arcel came back and helped uh, Roberto Duran win the title. So where are we today? Let's 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 talk about that, Jeffrey. Where are we today? Obviously, it's not what we saw. It's certainly not not at the level it was in your book. Is that still around, though? Do you still have that? Because it seems like it's what, especially in some of the more regional locations, it still seems like uh, it's a way to make money if if you're so inclined. Well, you know, uh, managers have become m- much smarter. So, for example, you know, you know, they'll choose who an opponent should be for, for their fighter. If they want their fighter to come along and, and have a good uh, boxing record, they're going to uh, uh, have opponents for their man who, who is not, as very, not, not a very good fighter. So they, they know that their guy's going to win. And, 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 and by betting on that, they're almost betting on a sure thing. The, the, the other thing is that in 1993, Sammy Gravano testified before a Senate committee investigating corruption in boxing. And he said that the way the mob would get involved in boxing, if it were to get involved in boxing, and he was very vague about that, would be not by fixing fights, but by owning a fighter through his manager. And, 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 the, and the fighter wouldn't even know that, that he was owned uh, by the mob, and, and the mob would own his manager. And what they would do is they would uh, take that fighter along and make sure that he won a whole series of fights. And then they would work with one of the sanctioning bodies. They would pay the sanctioning body. Uh, Gravano mentioned that a, a sanctioning body wanted $10,000 to rate a fighter they had. Wow. And, and, uh, but because he mentioned John Gotti's name, uh, the, the sanctioning body said, uh, oh, well, as, as a courtesy, we'll only take $5,000. And, 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 and the point was that, that the, the sanctioning body could raise the person up to the level of a contender. And, w- and once a person became a contender, there were all these ancillary ways of, of making incredible amounts of money through pay TV and, and, and all kinds of other things, mm-hmm. you know, where, where the fight would be worth <clears throat> tens of millions of dollars. And b- both the winner and the loser in the fight w- would be making tens of millions of dollars. And, 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 and that could be a, a much subtler way for, for the mob to get involved and control boxing than it did in, in the early days when they were simply fixing fights. Well, this book is fantastic. It really covers this thing. One last thing I want to ask you, though, as somebody who's covered boxing and, you know, you've written some great books on it. Thank you. I know what you think about people like Max Baer and Rocky Graziano and stuff and – it has to hurt as you go through that because the sport, when done the right way, is probably the truest sport out there. You know, they call it the sweet science. It kind of hurts to see whenever any of this stuff happens to take away the credibility of the people that are doing it right. Absolutely. And, you know, it takes a tremendous amount of courage to get into a ring and face someone uh, who, who is as strong and as powerful as you are. And, and it, it's probably one of the only sports in the world where someone – gets up and is willing to test himself in, in, in a kind of existential way that no other sport requires. And, and it, you know, it, 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 it started with the ancient Greeks in the Olympics, and, and, and it's been going on ever, ever since then. And, and, and it's a shame when uh, boxing is degraded 
by, the, by by the influence of, of of gangsters who were taking advantage of the sport and taking advantage uh, not only of the boxers but uh, but of the people who enjoy boxing and want to see a good match. Well, if people enjoy boxing, again, this is a must-have. It's a great book, Boxing and the Mob: The Notorious History of the Sweet Science. Just out, uh, Jeffrey. How do we get it? Uh, you can get it on Amazon.com or BarnesandNoble.com. That's easy enough, and it is it is out and ready to be purchased. So this is great. You'll get you be one of the first people to get it. Jeffrey, always love talking with you. Thanks so much. Thank, thank you for interviewing me. I enjoy speaking with you as well. 